and in this case we used the Gulliver modifier to run very small cars. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to put together a Pentium 4 system, but it's going to be a socket 423 build. And we start with the motherboard, the MSI MS-6339, an AGP Pro RDRAM combo powered by Intel's i850 chipset. Right next to the CPU, there are four memory slots for a total of 2GB of memory, but be aware, while other manufacturers like to sort their memory channels in groups, for this MSI to work, you need to put the memory modules right next to each other, and also the continuity rims. It took some trial and error to find the right setup. Initially I couldn't find the memory terminators, so I couldn't identify the channels. For an RDRAM motherboard, if you can't afford to fill the memory slots, you need to occupy the remaining slots. It has something to do with the electrical circuit that I'm not really qualified to easily explain. All I know is that these guys are also called terminators, but they are only used to close the electrical circuit. So initially I couldn't find the continuity rims and I only had 4 dims that have just one different number that I thought it belonged to the manufactured date. I also had the manual for the Asus P4T because MSI didn't bother to explain their channels. So I matched the memory modules with one in one group and one in another. And the computer booted and I could start the Windows XP installation. But soon I got a blue screen and it all made sense. The similar memory modules had to be in the same group. Besides the 4X AGP Pro slot, the motherboard also offers plenty of PCIs and the CNR slot. For storage we have the standard two IDE connectors and one floppy connector. One other interesting aspect of this board is that besides the standard 20 pin power connector and the 4 pin 12 volt power connector, we also have what's called the Pentium 4 connector that provides additional power and looks like one half of an AT power connector. And while the manual specifies this connector as optional, I wasn't able to boot the motherboard without it connected. In the backplate area we have the standard PS2 connectors, two USBs, one parallel and two serial, a game port and six channel audio. The CPU we are going to use today is the Pentium 4 1.4 GHz, which is almost the slowest for this socket. The socket 423 was short-lived as its electrical design was deemed inadequate for raising clock speeds beyond 2 GHz. Intel only produced chips for this socket for less than one year from November 2000 to August 2001. In the meantime I found the terminators and I decided to decrease the installed memory capacity to just 512 MB of RAM by removing two modules and replacing them with continuity rims. The graphics card we are going to use for this project is the GeForce 2 GTS. It was released in April 2000 and it was on the shelves of computer stores at the time when the CPU and the motherboard were available. And we start with the assembly. Fitting the CPU is no different from a regular socket 370, Pentium 3 or an AMD. And after applying some MX4, I'm fitting the standard socket 423 radiator and fan. The mounting mechanism is a bit different from what we've seen until now with two clips that fit the radiator in place, but I have nothing against it as I consider the following mounting mechanisms from Intel for socket 478 and 775 to be worse. As we talked a lot about the memory, it's time to show how to actually fit it onto the motherboard. The similar memory modules go right next to each other in the first two slots from the CPU. The terminators go into the slots 3 and 4 from the CPU. As I confidently put the motherboard onto the bench table, I connected the 20 pin power connector and the 4 pin power connector, firmly believing the manual. But don't be fooled, the Pentium 4 connector is required, at least by this motherboard, and later I've replaced the power supply unit with the proper one. 
Finally, we add the graphics card and the Sound Blaster Live. Once booted into Windows, we open CPU-Z for some information. The CPU has 256 KB of level 2 cache. The universal AGP only supports 4X. And the memory modules run at 400 MHz. Next we have Everest that provides the same information but has some additional details. Lastly, we have Sandra, but we're not going to use it for information. We just want to look for fun at the performance rating of this CPU. I'm in no way convinced by this number, but it's fun to test it against real-life benchmark results of other CPUs. Speaking about other CPUs, a little while back we looked at the Pentium 3 running at 1.4 GHz. So after swapping some parts, we're going to use that system to benchmark against the Pentium 4. Not pictured here is that after I've ran the benchmarks with the Pentium 3, I also swapped the CPU with a socket 370 Celeron running at 1.4 GHz. And here are some results of a few popular benchmarks. Except for the video encoding, where the Pentium 4 is able to use its SSC2 instructions, almost in every other category it falls behind the Pentium 3 and also the Celeron. Of course our DRAM was really more advanced than SDRAM, you can see that it's more than 50% better than the PC-133 used by the Pentium 3 and more than double over the PC-100 used by the Celeron. But in every other category, the score is in favor of the Tualatins. Moving to synthetic benchmarks, we come to the same conclusion. It's funny how even the Pentium rating is better for the Tualatins. But we can derive an interesting conclusion that somehow the Pentium rating is based on the synthetic tests when probably it should take many other things into consideration. Looking at the graphics benchmarks, we can see that the Pentium 4 is also lagging behind the other two CPUs, and only in 3 d Mark 2001 it catches up with the Pentium 3, but knowing the previous results this makes me wonder if we may have a graphical bottleneck by using the GeForce 2 GTS. This is somewhat confirmed by the results of the very few games I've benchmarked. Before we continue, let's see some games appropriate to the Pentium 4's processing power. And we start with 1996's Ignition. Nineteen ninety nine revolt is next. Need for Speed Porsche is next, and in this case we use the Gulliver modifier to run very small cars. Two thousand one stunt GP is next, and I have to admit that I've missed this one back in the day, but playing it now it provided me with lots of fun.
Last one is 2002's RC Cars that is also quite fun to play. Now that we had our little fun, personally I couldn't sleep easy not knowing where the Pentium 4 catches up to the Pentium 3. So I upgraded the current build with the Pentium 4 1.7 GHz. We're giving the Pentium 4 1.7 the same treatment and we investigate the results. While the 1.7 has the upper hand in encoding and Super Pi calculation, it still falls behind in everything else. The synthetic tests don't make it any justice either. Just the Pentium rating goes all the way up to 1866, which makes me believe that the floating point calculation or SSE has a bigger impact on this one. When it comes to benchmarks, the 1.7 is no slouch and I can surely say that the Tualatins are at least evenly matched. When it comes to games, my previous suspicion is almost confirmed and the GeForce 2 GTS is definitely bottlenecking these systems. So where do we go from here? Obviously we dig a bit more in the CPU box and come up with the Pentium 4 1.9 GHz. Again we start with the boring information from CPU-Z and we follow it up with Everest and Sandra. When it comes to the usual tests, the 1 MB calculation of SuperPi and the video encoding, this CPU really puts some distance between itself and the Pentium 3. But in PCMark 2002 test for the CPU, it barely overpowers the Pentium 3. PassMark is identical, but the Razer Lame encoding and CPU mark are still lagging behind. There are no surprises in the synthetic tests, and we can definitely say that CPU-wise the Pentium 3 has been beaten. The graphical benchmarks confirm this, and for games' benchmarks, I'm really not sure why we look at them anymore, since we already concluded that the graphics card was bottlenecking everything. And on that topic, because too much work was already put into this project when I figured out that I need to benchmark with a better card, I will redo these tests and I would like to ask your opinion on what to use. Should I use this GeForce 3 TI 500 or the GeForce 4 TI 4400? Or maybe it's better if I should have stayed with the original card from the retro blue build, the Radian 8500. On the topic of redoing this clip, there's another very good reason for this. You see, before using the MSI, I've used another two motherboards. I've started with the Asus P40, but as soon as I plugged it in, a capacitor exploded in the power delivery area. You can see it popped up in the upper left corner. Then realizing my mistake, that I shouldn't have used RDRAM, I switched over to this MSI that uses SDRAM just like the Pentium 3. But this also was short-lived as it froze 20 minutes into the installation of Windows and refused to boot afterwards. Hoping that I can get it fixed or find a replacement, I plan to redo all the tests using SDRAM on the Pentium 4 platform. In the end, while reviewing the Pentium 4 1.4 GHz, I've come to the conclusion that the Pentium 3S 1.4 GHz is probably equal to the Pentium 4 1.8 GHz, and the Celeron is awfully close to the Pentium 4 1.7 GHz. I've also done some specific tests that we're going to discuss in the remake. I'm just going to leave the results here. To conclude this comparison, I can't really say that Intel made a step back with the Socket 423 for two reasons. Chronologically, both the Pentium 3S and the Celeron were released in 2002, one year after these Pentium 4 were no longer with us. And the second reason is that they were releasing new architecture that brought innovation, including the SSE2 instructions. But we can also assume that none of the software back then was optimized for that, including the software we used today for benchmarks. I was a bit lazy to check the prices of these processors, but I'm willing to bet that by 2002, the Socket 423 was very competitive compared to the Pentium 3S.
In the end, the Pentium 3S enjoys a smaller pipeline and has double the amount of level 2 cache, allowing it to do more during a cycle, making it almost similar to a Pentium 4 running at 1.8 GHz. But enough about pipelines, cache and frequency. Let's get back to the Pentium 4 1.4 and enjoy some R&R &R with Return to Castle Wolfenstein and Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Thank you for watching and see you next time.